Hello everybody, my name is Octoprofessor Player and welcome to a brand new tutorial on how to do lip sync animations for Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition in a brand new method as well. Um, recently we have released our newest update for the game uh, and not only that, we have released our new, our, uh, new update for the uh, uh, for GH Tools for our Blender plugin. In here we include Pyro, Script Improvements and Lip Sync Options. And what are those lip sync options are? Well, let me show you. Um, I will provide you guys down in the description down below this model, which is uh, GHWT Rocker Template Male Blender Track. If you already know from our old tutorial, uh, if you already installed or you haven't installed your um, <clears throat> your Blender Track, I suggest that you uh, check out right here, uh, if anything, so you guys can uh, see the uh the way that it's done um anyways um to do import our animations we'll be using uh this little neat feature that we include this is the um the lip sync uh properties and here you can see our blend our track scale and you will see our character armature and blend our track controller we don't necessarily have to touch those um i'm currently using an iphone 13 to do uh, my own lip sync stuff, so um, I'll show you how how uh, how to do that stuff right now. So um, let me find it uh, right here. Uh, let's import our mocap animations real quick. Uh, we should find it over here, and then let's pick one of these uh, lip syncs, if anything. Uh, let's pick this one, and then you would select face rig empties, and then import data. Actually, I would suggest that you guys uh, toggle system console so you at least get to see in real time the import, if anything. Um, it's actually pretty easy to now import these data as you will see right now. If anything, it's going to be much more uh, better since the last tutorial that I made, uh, since it's now extremely outdated right now. Um, which I wanted to talk about uh, lip sync real quick. Um, some phones, like the Samsung or Androids, so unfortunately don't have the same frame rate as the iPhones, as you can see right here. Uh, if we go play it right now, it will be defaulted by uh, 60 frames per second, as you can see right here. Um, sometimes they can be defaulted to 24 frames per second, 30 frames, or even lower. And that can be a little bit uh, difficult to work, if that's saying much. So um in here you can actually do fix this issue so you will go into the frame range uh right here you will open time stretching and for old that that would be the current uh frame rate that you will be running below 59 or 60 so if we say we put 25 then you want to convert to uh 60 then it will be playing uh that old frame rate to 60 frames and it will look much more better on default or not default but you know it will look much more better in the end that's all i wanted to say but anyways since if you guys have an iphone uh x or plus then you should probably be fine honestly um anyways so now that we have our animation here as you can see now this is where the easy part comes in uh to do this, you don't really have to mess up with this. Like I said, you just need to click on link Blender Trek. Let me just show you right here so you can see. If we click on it, there we go. You should see that the uh, movements are actually on par with all the facial bones. Pretty cool. So um, I want to show you guys about... Uh, these little funny objects that's uh, drawn around here. So Sedek the Plague Doctor uh, has added these uh, drivers for doing keyframing um, animations if you don't feel or don't have the luxury of having a phone that actually captures your uh, facial animations correctly. Or maybe you do have it, but just the mouth only was covered and not the eyebrows or or the eyelids animations which easily that can be uh pretty much 
keyframe. And the way that you can do that is pretty much you can move these up or down. As you can see, you can give the eyebrow some expressions, or if you want to make the cheeks over here much more puffy, if anything, uh, you pick it like you can move around. See that I'm messing around with the meshes. And here, if you want to deal with the lips, you can make it put if you want to. Or if you want to do this, if you want to open it, if anything, you sure they should. If anything, we always do update these uh these templates from time. But really, some of the most important features that I would like to uh, introduce would be the eye movement. Since the last time I didn't really explain how to do those or even mention them, frankly. So here. This is the, the driver I look at target. In here, you can actually pretty much move anywhere. As you can see, the eyes are pretty much rotating and moving as they should. So let me just go back here. And the way to do that is that you pretty much have to press I, then insert on location and rotation. And then over here when hovering the mouse, you can go and, oh, actually, I don't even think you guys can see. Uh, let me change that real quick. As you can see, you guys can see the frame right here. And so when I'm hovering the uh, the timeline here, you can just press on Shift plus D. In here, we have duplicated the, the, the frames to pretty much last around somewhere around 60 or 40 frames. I'm just going to put 60 for pure convenience. And if you want to move the if you want to move the eye to another position, you have to do it outside of this range. So after this, now you can be able to pretty much uh, move this freely. Really, you can put it upper here, and uh, let's put it to like frame eighty. Actually, we can just do it again. Oh yeah, if you do move to any frames, this could actually reset the position, and you have to do all the thing again. So you know. Um, in here, you can, again, press I, location and rotation, and do Shift and D. Duplicate it. Oh, wait, let me get rid of this one so we don't do this. And then, you know, pretty much extend the whole thing up to 140 frames. And as you can see, it does the job correctly. Anyways. Uh, this is pretty much the basics of doing this. This is where you can get where you guys can um, figure this out on your own and how you want to animate your eye animations, if anything. So now I'm going to show you guys how to export the animations. So I want to start by putting the end frame to zero, since it's going to be much more convenient uh, when doing the the animation placement for the lip sync. So you want since you want it to be on on a specific time, if anything. So um, in here, you go into the list right here in drivers, then show player armature. In here, we can now hide the rocker model. And now what we're gonna do is press on the rocker skeleton. In here, you can go into post mode. And this is where you're gonna have to be a little bit careful. Cause now you're gonna have to select only the facial parts. You can't just select like at random like this, because this will include the, the bones that we don't really need. So it's better to just do it like this. There you go. Pretty easy. Now what you can do is go to pose, animation, fake action. And like I said, this is where um, you can put the start frame to zero. So it's much more convenient. Or you could have just done this from here. It's all the same, really. Now, the frame step is how much, uh, how many frames are just, they're just going to be skipping. Um, this can actually do save a lot of the, a lot of, uh, a lot of megabytes or bytes, really. So you don't really accumulate too much, uh, file storage. So the best to start would be at two. But if you really want to be a little bit much more, um, optimizable, you can, Crank it up up to four, or six, or eight. Uh, this is all just all up to you. Since you really want to actually make it work, then pretty much uh, that's all on your own. Um. Anyways, over here you need to select only select the bones, visual keying, 
and overwrite current action. And for the baked data, this will go to pose. And you click and OK. Making sure that the recordings are good. Let this process for a moment. And there you go. Our animation has successfully baked into the skeleton. By the way, don't worry if the mouth or the expressions look kind of odd. Um, what usually happens is that since you have two animations on, on top of each other, uh, you know, you have on the bottom the original unbaked animations, and then on top you have the recently baked animations that we have right now, then it will just coexist and then it will pretty much overlay the animations. But don't worry, that's not going to be the on the end product. That I can tell you. So sometimes when you're dealing with these uh with these fake datas, usually what happens is that um sometimes the frames can get a little bit shorter and at the end at least. And so, you know, uh and you would have like this specific gray area that's totally being on use. And so the way that you would fix it is to pretty much click on the exact frame that it ends. And then on, let's say if it ended at 3,340, then you would type uh, that specific uh, frame end, frame end on the number. <laughs> so um, yeah, pretty much that would be that. And we can be good to go to export. And the way to do this is go back to the object mode, then go into export, go into GH tools, go into numbers of animation. And this is where we can pretty much create our own um, name for the file. You, this can be pretty much anything. You can pretty much make it as hero lip sync or, well, not technically like this. It's more like song then lip sync. And then if you want to add uh, underscore one for chronological order so it's much more convenient or you can just do it a fancy way like uh, world tour de singer male song song name to be more specific and then one or if you have uh background vocals that you want to add it to either guitar bass or drums you can either add one a or like um a pretty much whatever fits your uh bells really so we're just gonna pick this one just for pure convenience. Also, like I said, if you guys wanna see the real time progression, just enable the toggle window console by going to window and toggle system console. Now that that's out of the way, we can start doing the export. And as you can see, um, it, it tells us the scan length. So I want to mention something quickly. Um, to my knowledge, uh, if you have a uh, footage or uh, yeah, a footage more than 70 seconds, the render or uh, export it could potentially break during this progress. So it's better to stay somewhere around a minute worth of um, uh, a footage. The maximum that it, the or at least the minimum that it can go is uh, 70 seconds. More than that's just gonna give you an error. But if you haven't received any errors and have all the way up to here then congratulations you have successfully exported the song if you guys want to see the uh file size i'll show you right now as you can see it's 1.3 megabytes so not exactly too big but you know like i said you could pretty much uh mess around with the frame steps and that's pretty much it um i hope you guys uh enjoyed this video and if you guys have any more questions, uh, leave your questions down below, or you can join our Guitar Hero World Tour uh, Definitive Edition server, in which we could um, happily um, answer your questions on here or anywhere really on World Tour D helpline if you need anything, and we'll be more than happy to help. So uh, as always, thank you so much, and have a pretty great night. See ya.